Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today once again we're going to talk about Barnard Star B, the recently discovered exoplanet very very close to our solar system. This is actually the second closest exoplanet to us, but unfortunately as you may have heard from either the previous video or the news, this particular exoplanet is kind of chilly, it's pretty cold here, at least that's the assumption. But in this video, I wanted to investigate, can we actually find the conditions for this planet to actually be, well, I guess, habitable? Can we somehow, possibly, find just the right conditions for this planet to be very Earth-like, at least in its temperature? So let's play around with various um, simulations, and specifically Universe Sandbox Square, and find out if we can make this beautiful world not just a nice world, but a habitable exoplanet. And to start all of this, we're going to go to Universe Sandbox and essentially recreate the system um, as it is, at least uh, according to the paper about this particular star. You can actually find a little bit more information about both the star, the planet, the discovery and the paper in the video I made previously. Today we're just going to play around with the simulation. So, okay. What we have here is a planet that orbits every 233 days and it um, has a very eccentric orbit of about 32%. It's 0.32 eccentricity. If you look on the surface, you'll find something kind of frozen. Now, let's assume for a second that this object is very similar to Titan, as it is mentioned in the paper. In other words, it has a composition that, uh, for the most part, is liquids and ices, it has some silicates on the surface, and maybe some iron in there as well. Overall, this means that the density of this object would be maybe around 2, maybe 3 um, grams per centimeter cube, so that's what we're going to make it here. The only thing we know for certain is its mass is about 3.2 masses of Earth, but we don't really know the radius, so the radius will have to um, adjust automatically according to what we make here. Right now, I think it's going to be set at about 11,500 kilometers, which is approximately 1.8 radii of Earth. Now, this is actually a very important part because if this planet is actually larger in size, in other words, let's say it's this big, it would actually receive more starlight, or sunlight in this case, although technically it's not the sun, it's the Barnard star, but Barnard starlight doesn't sound very good, so let's just call it sunlight. Um, and because of that, it would actually be warmer. If, however, it's very dense, as a matter of fact, if it's actually uh, even more dense than planet Earth, it would be much smaller in size and thus receive dramatically less uh, starlight. So uh, we're going to make it somewhere in between, maybe at three. So let's say this is actually what the planet looks like. What conditions do we need to create here for this to be approximately the same temperature as our own planet Earth? Now, it really depends on two major components. One of them is going to be reflectivity, known as albedo. And for Titan, it's around 22%, 0.22. And uh, one of them is the um, greenhouse effect, which is really formed by the amount of atmospheric pressure that's present here. Now, for Titan, uh, the atmospheric pressure is close to Earth, but uh, because of the kind of gases present in the atmosphere of Titan, let me actually just place it in orbit here so you can see what I'm talking about. Because of the gases present here, not only can you not see the atmosphere, the actual surface of this object is cooled down by its gases. It doesn't really get greenhouse effect, it gets the anti-greenhouse effect, which is something unique and is not present anywhere else in our solar system. So in that sense, uh, maybe if it's like Titan, it's even colder here. But we want to create something that's closer to planet Earth, so we're going to assume that our uh, Barnard Star B is going to have a lot of CO2 and maybe some other greenhouse gases here that will make it warmer, not colder. So we're going to remove Titan for now. And so let's start by assuming that uh, the surface pressure here is similar to Titan, about 1.6 atmospheres. And with this assumption, the temperature um, goes between about minus 120 or 130 degrees Celsius and approximately 70, I think, minus 70. And this is because the eccentricity is really high, so uh, the seasons on this planet would be quite extreme. Um, and also because of the seasons, uh, 
you can assume that if there's any atmosphere, there's going to be a tremendous amount of atmospheric activities. And that includes storms that might be so powerful that uh, they would dwarf anything that uh, is present on the planet Earth. As a matter of fact, if this object actually does have hurricanes, they would be extremely, extremely powerful. But anyway, so 1.6 atmospheres is not enough. How about we do 10? Let's assume that the actual pressure here is really high. 10 um, atmospheres. Okay, so look at that. This is really interesting. It goes from liquid to solid. Every single year, this object, when it's in the summertime, basically has molten water. But in the winter, it suddenly freezes again. And this is really, really cool. So it seems to go from between minus 60 degrees Celsius to about 20 degrees Celsius. And this is how extreme the temperatures here could potentially be. And this is why this planet is not very suitable for the human beings because of the extremes in um, its seasons. But nevertheless, though, if this is actually what's happening here, it would be really cool. It's quite possible that um, it's not water, that, but something else that constantly melts here because um, an ice, for example, like methane, might potentially go through these similar cycles on this object. But water would be even cooler. So not really what we're looking for, though. We want something more stable. So let's say that the surface pressure here is about 20 atmospheres. And what this creates is essentially um, a very long summer-like conditions with water being present most of the time but temperatures reaching um, really high 60s, 60 degrees Celsius, which is much higher than anything on Earth. And in the winter, it drops down to about minus 27 degrees Celsius, which is, well, actually, that's kind of like back home in Canada. And so at this point, this is, I guess, as close as we'll come to uh, making this a relatively Earth-like conditions, but very extreme Earth-like conditions. And remember, a single year here is about 233 days. So that means that every 100 days, it goes from 60 degrees Celsius to minus 30 degrees Celsius. And that's kind of ridiculous. If, however, this is even more extreme, like, for example, what if the pressures here are similar to Venus, which is about 91 atmospheres? In that case, you can expect something even more extreme. Look at that. It goes from being covered by water to being completely dry. That's because the temperatures go from uh, 200 degrees Celsius to maybe about 70. So the conditions here are definitely fun to observe, but not fun to experience. As a matter of fact, I don't think any human being would want to survive on this planet, no matter how beautiful it is. But because this planet is so extreme and things here change so fast, this could be a tremendous opportunity to study how extreme worlds like this work. This world could also be used to study um, the effects of high eccentricity on planets and maybe even uh, try to understand how such worlds evolve. But I think for me personally, I really can't wait to discover what kind of atmosphere this planet has and most importantly, what it contains on the surface. Because being able to observe this world with some of the future telescopes in the next five years is going to bring an understanding that we've never had before about worlds outside our own uh, solar system. We already know extreme worlds can exist with objects like obviously Titan and Venus that we have in our own solar system, but objects like this might make it even more extreme. And so hopefully in the next five years or so, we'll discover what's really happening on this world and maybe even one day be able to send a probe here to try to find out if we can actually somehow use this planet for some kind of a scientific research facility. Anyway, so that's really all you need to do to try to create an Earth-like object in the system. You just need to give it some atmospheres, some atmospheric pressure, specifically about 20 atmospheres of air. And in compared to Earth, which I'm going to place right next to this planet, it actually means providing quite a lot of material. So to create 20 atmospheres of pressure, we need about three uh, times 10 to the power of 20 kilograms of atmosphere, but our planet Earth has about 100 times less. So that's definitely a lot more than we can currently imagine on the planet Earth, but if you compare this to Venus, 
Venus actually does have just as much. It has about 5 uh, times 10 to the power of 20 kilograms. So if we were to take the entire atmosphere of Venus and to then place it on the newly found Barnard's B, in that case you could actually create something that you just observed a few minutes ago. A world that essentially changes between a frozen tundra to this, a liquid water world. And that would be really interesting to see from a distance. But honestly, I would never want to come here. The conditions here, at least the temperature, would make me very miserable. I'm already struggling with the Korean cold winters and hot summers. This is a completely new, different kind of extreme. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. So now you know what we need to do to turn Barnard's B into a slightly more habitable Earth-like world. Thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, consider supporting the channel on Patreon, and subscribe if you still haven't. Space out, and as always, bye bye.